Hey, this is JD with the Aquaponics Source. Wanted to talk a little bit about the greenhouse we're working in today. We've built a really nice, highly productive aquaponic system. But what makes all of this work too is to have a really efficient, energy efficient greenhouse system. So this particular project is a 3,000 square foot series greenhouse. So a couple key features here. One is of which is the GAT system, which sound, stands for ground to air heat transfer. You might have heard it being called a climate battery or a low grade geothermal system. There's a lot of different terms out there. But basically what's happening in here is there's an inline circulation fan and this is drawing air, uh, hot air in the summer down into a series of piping that's all underneath the ground, underneath the slab here, about four feet deep. And that's really acting as a big, you know, thermal battery. And we're using the temperature uh, of the ground to help cool that hot air. Hot air. And the other couple different places throughout the greenhouse, these shorter pipes are actually releasing cooler air out of the greenhouse, or out of the ground, I should say, um, and helping to naturally cool that air, which is great. In addition to this, we have a uh, wet wall system here, so that's also providing evaporative cooling. And so there's large ventilation fans on the other side of the greenhouse. That's going to draw air across this saturated pad here. And this is just another stage of cooling. And the way the environmental controller is set up is we're going to try to leverage the GAT system as much as possible. But when it gets real hot in the summer in particular, then as a separate stage, the cooling wall and the fans can also kick on as well. Uh, another key feature in this greenhouse, if you look uh, along the north wall here, first of all, the north wall is highly insulated. And in this case, it actually backs up to a larger building, which is great. So that also provides insulation. So all that heat energy we're storing, especially in the winter, isn't getting lost out the north wall. We have a highly insulated north wall, but this silver material that you see, um, really like wallpaper up on the wall here, actually has uh, an organic material in here that can store that heat energy. So if you've heard of um, you know, older water barrel type systems and water is a great way to store heat energy and then releases that heat energy at night when the air temperature drops, well that's a cool way of doing it. Well this is just taking it to the next level where we don't have to waste a lot of space to big water barrels. All these little pockets have a gel material in here that can actually be specifically designed to the temperature that you want to cool to. So this can actually store that heat energy uh, and then it turns from a solid to a liquid and releases that heat energy as the air temperature drops at night to help provide yet another way to really passively heat and or cool uh, your greenhouse. So that's another system, the GAT, uh, the insulation, the wet wall, the fans, and the phase change material that are providing different mechanisms for heating and cooling the greenhouse. Finally, one of the important factors too is the glazing material as well, which is really where you lose a lot of that heat energy. So in these passive solar greenhouses, they're using a triple wall uh, insulated material, so you have a higher R value. I think this one's around 2.7, so comparatively with either your twin wall or certainly single wall material, you're gonna get a higher thermal resistance value out of this triple wall glazing. It's also a lot much stronger, so if you have a hailstorm, which happens especially in Colorado a lot, um, that's very likely not gonna penetrate all the way through this triple wall material. Um, Otherwise, a real strong structure here, uh, insulated west and east walls as well. Um, so this building is really designed to minimize uh, energy uh, utilization, run efficiently, which is a big part of what makes these aquaponic farms successful is we, wanna, we don't want to be wasting money on energy, we want to be growing food um, as efficiently and productively as possible.